Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Peter chapter 5 The elders, those in charge of the church, which are among you, I exhort, urge, by strong argument, who am also an elder, so Peter's an elder, an apostle, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. It's quite interesting. Because we're told that when the cock crew, Peter went off weeping bitterly. He had denied Jesus Christ. So there was sufferings of Christ going on even before that moment. When Peter left. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. The glory revealed when Christ comes. Peter saved. Feed the flock of God. That's to the elders. Too many sheep in the churches today are starving to death. You can count their ribs. They're not being fed to the Bible. They don't even have a Bible. I don't know. Listen, these churches that have a modern Bible, they ain't no Bible, they ain't feeding. Feed the flock of God. That's a note to pastors. Which is among you. Your flock. You're supposed to feed your flock. Some pastors go out and feed other flocks. While yours is starving and not getting attention. Listen, we read it in Luke. A um, shepherd lost one she sheep and he went out and looked and searched and left the 99. And he was happy when he got that one sheep. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight. Soup, uh, uh, <clears throat> that is, watching watchful care. Oversight. That's a boss. That's a parent. That is somebody who oversees something going on. They're in charge. So feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Watch them. Look out. Make sure there's no wolves coming in. Make sure somebody who's coming in, they're not a wolf in sheep's clothing. Not by, not by constraint. Don't do it by force. Oh, I have to do it. This is my father's ministry. And he, that's, a, that's another thing that's coming up these days. These ministry, these, these sons of pastors going into the Bible college because their father went to this school. That's by constraint. Young know, man, why are you here? My father was here. Has God called you? Well, no. But this is my father's call. That's constraint. Peter says, no. But willingly, go of a willing. Not a filthy liquor. Don't do it for the money. And you can make the ministry rich by not doing nothing and getting the money. A pastor is a full-time hard job. But of a ready mind. Be ready. 
But you don't know what that sheep is going to bring to you. You don't know what that sheep's going to come have all over his his uh, wool. You don't know what that sheep is going to get in trouble. You don't know what that sheep is going to ask you about. Be ready. And look at chapter 3, verse 15. Be sanct But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man to ask you a reason of hope that is in you, meekness and fear. So... Be ready, mind. Neither as being lords over God's inheritance. You are driving the sheep. You are forcing the sheep. You are pushing the sheep. No, you don't. And you have become God of the sheep. You have become the Lord of the sheep, not Jesus Christ. You have become more Lord to the sheep than the Lord is to the sheep, and you are reverenced. But being in samples to the flock. Everyone should read their Bible through the year. Have you, Pastor? Everyone should pray. Have you, Pastor? Are you praying? Don't expect your church to pray if you're not praying. Don't expect your church to read their Bibles through the year if you're not doing it. Don't expect the church to go out and win souls for Christ if you ain't doing it. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Oh. Christ. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Faithful ministers are going to get a crown. This crown is for those that work the ministry. And there are many in the ministry that will not get this crown because they're not faithful. And there are many in the ministry that won't get no crown. They will not get heaven because they're of Satan, 1 Corinthians 11. So here's another crown of five crowns of glory. We are to help our pastors get this crown. We are to encourage our pastors to get this crown. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. So that's the man we've been talking about. So the elder is someone of age. He's had a little experience in his life of things. A lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. All right, so you got an elder. You got somebody who's who's older in the church, and we're told you're to you're to uh, give them honor. You're to respect him as being someone yo younger. And to everyone, we're to be subject and help, as we saw last night, as stewards and ministers to everybody. We are not called to lift that man behind the pulpit up on a pedestal. That's the shame. Paul said, oh, some say I'm a Paul, or I'm a Silas. And Paul's like, knock it off, you, you, you carnal babes. You're puffed up. Ye all of you be subject one to another. That's everyone in the church. And be clothed with humility. No pride. No being proud. No being stuck on yourself. For God resists the proud. Get that. Know that. Write that down. Mark that down. God has nothing to do with pride. This is my son and I'm well pleased with him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God is never and will ever say pride, proud. That's like God lying. He can't. And giveth grace to the humble. You want grace? Be humble. You want to fall? Be proud. And there are men in the pulpits, they are completely, look who I am, look what office I am, touch not my anointed. That's not for you. It's in the book of Psalms. I've, I've heard pastors say, you know, you're going to do what he tells you to do, or you can get your money back and, and go somewhere else. You're full. 
Humble yourselves. So I guess that's what the that's guess what this one is about. No pride, no being proud. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now there's nothing wrong with God lifting you up. But let God do it. Let God reward you. Let your time be at the judgment seat of Christ when Christ will give you a reward. Too many people today are doing things such as memory verses to get a Hershey bar or a Hershey's kiss or a little ribbon or a Bible that they've already got and they'll be up in heaven like, well, where is my reward? It tasted good, didn't it? And I know by kids in all the churches I've been in, I've been in many churches, that those snotty little kids are, oh, look at me, I got it, you know. That's not the way to raise a child in church. And there's anybody who's going to drive a child to do Bible verses, it's not the Sunday school teacher, it's the parents, because that's the parent's job. It's the parent to beat the behind when, when that child's done wrong. And there'll be no charge against that child for the parent to reward their child because that's the Bible. But when you send them to church and we'll give you all kinds of things, we'll give you rewards, and they're going to expect their entire life to get rewards for doing things. That's not being humble. Nah, 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 nah. There are more Bible verses than you. I got more Hershey kisses than you. And then you got competition. It's wrong. It's wrong. Imagine Christians competing with each other. Imagine Christians at the Coliseum. I bet you I'll have more lions chase me around than you guys. No, 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 no. I don't care. I want to do what God says. Let God exalt you. Jesus said, let not your right hand know what your left hand's doing. I said, the most stupidest thing I've heard, I, I haven't seen this, I, I like this, is, is, they got the money dance. And they go around, they start with $1, and they start with $5, and that one person will give the, the last man to go around, and he's got the biggest amount of money in the church. That's foolish. That's pride. That's proud. There is... No other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. It's not your name. Sorry. By the way, you know, if we be exalted in due time, if I receive a crown, if, I don't know, I'm hopeful, I'm a sinner, I may have lost them. Do you know what that, in turn, that crown is going to happen? I'm going to throw that crown down at Jesus Christ and worship Jesus Christ. Okay? So even lifting me up a little bit of reward, I'm going to give it back to Jesus. That Hershey kiss you got for the, for, the, for the scripture verse, I don't want it back. You can have it. Throw the wrapper in the garbage. Be sober. Again, that's serious and don't drink. Both hands. Be sober. Be vigilant. Now that is not uh, do unto others. That's, that's not, no. That is being watchful. My life is, is going near down the tubes. I need to churn. Something I'm doing is, is going to be a bad result in the end. Something that has happened to my church is not good in the future. I'm getting too much studying another Bible than I should be studying. We had people today that come talk about other Bibles. I told that guy when we were talking, I said, "You need to get out of that. Never mind what the what those perverted Bibles say. Stay in the right Bible. You're going to head that because then you're going to take more interest in those. So sober, vigilant, because." Your adversary, the devil. Oh. Be serious and be watchful because of Satan. As a roaring lion. 
So, Jesus, the lion, the tribe of Judah, has an enemy who also appears as a lion. So, if you are sitting in your church and you expect a red being with a horns and pitchfork and a long tail that looks like an arrow to step up in your pulpit and say, Oh, bring your Bible. Blah, blah, blah. I'm leaving. No, no, no. Because 1 Corinthians 11 says that that Satan will appear as a minister of righteousness and you won't even be able to tell the difference. You got to realize that that Satan does not look like what the cartoons say he looks like. He looks like Jesus. He acts like Jesus. He is so much like Jesus, the Bible calls him the Antichrist. And he matches the particulars. Only thing with Satan, his particulars are unholy while Jesus is holy. The Bibles, the modern Bibles out there, they look like the Bible. But they got some things missing. They got some things added. But it says Bible. There's a King James Bible on the market. If you don't check Acts chapter 7, you're going to think you have a King James Bible. And all it does is changes one name. Satan is slick. I've seen Satan come into church. You know what I've seen him do? I've seen him kick people's Bibles over during a good message. There he was. And I didn't even see what he looks like. I just seen that Bible flip over. Somebody was paying attention to the message and that Bible ended up on the floor. I'll tell you another way. I'll tell you the best way Satan shows up in church during a great message. Old school. This is old school and I'll tell you new school. Candy wrappers. I'll tell you how he shows up in the churches today. Your cell phone goes off. You got an electronic computer in your lap and, and then you got an email. That's how Satan shows up. Satan's not in the bar. He's in the church trying to distract the services. He's doing a very good job. As a lion walking about. Seeking whom he may devour. Nahum 2 1. He wants to devour you. He wants to charge you. He wants to destroy you. Jesus told even Peter, he says, Listen, I, I'm praying for you. Satan wants to shift you like we. This is the man we're talking about. Peter. Satan went after Peter and Jesus had to pray for him. Peter has a great file cabinet of life experience to be speaking to us. So he warns us about the devil. So guess what? There is a devil according to the Bible. Now if he is the first pope, you wouldn't find any pope preaching about the devil today. So Peter's not the Pope because he preaches there is a devil, he is the enemy, and he's not in red, he looks like a lion. Now go study the characteristics of lions. Lions, they have black and white vision, which is a better advantage at night to hunt. That's what period of darkness we are in today. We're in night. The church is at night. You cannot outrun, fight, or hide from him. He knows who is weak and or tired, frightened. And that is his interest. Those lions will look out and say, oh, that one's old. That's the one we want. That one's limping. That's the one we want. So the lion will not go after the strong Christian. He'll go after the weak Christians. And if you're a strong Christian, he'll try to make you weak so he can go after you. He'll make you be looking at other things than what you should be doing. Know your enemy. 
study lions. Study how they hunt. Whom Satan resist, resist him, steadfast in the faith. Oh, I'm going to go after him with a water pistol. Oh, no, no. I heard a preacher say that too. No, you go after him by faith. Philippians 4.13, 1 Corinthians 10.13, Romans 8.28. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And as the Bible said, I believe James said, as Elijah was with a light passion. First John tells us that the tools of Satan is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That is what the lion uses. He has not changed it since Adam and Eve. It works very great. Those are the three tools in his toolbox that he uses to destroy man. And we are to be aware of that. And we are to go by faith in the word of God as Jesus conquered Satan. Even after 40 days and 40 nights of no food. It's possible to get the victory over Satan. But you must do it correctly. And guess what? Verse 9. You're not the only one that has been in his sights. Other Christians have been attacked. But the... God of all grace, that's what you need for fighting Satan, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, suffering, 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 you will suffer. After that, make you perfect, establish, straighten, settle you. Now that will be my standing at the rapture. That will be my standing where I'm absent from the body and present with the Lord. When I am dead or raptured, I will be perfect. Especially after the, after the judgment seat of Christ, when all has been judged, I will definitely be perfect. Establish. I cannot, will not, and ever lose my soul. Ever. Strengthen. What more can strengthen me when I am actually in the arms of Jesus Christ and brought to the Father by Jesus Christ? Say, say, Father, yes, son, this is Stiley who has believed on me as his Savior. He has died or been raptured. I bring him before you to meet your son. Father, Stiley, Steve, Stiley, the Father. Boy, will that give you strength at that moment. There he is. Settle you. After you met the Father, there's the angels, there's the cherubim, style you've always wanted to hear him say, Holy, 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 come with me. After that, I'll show you Isaiah, I'll show you the prophets, I'll, I'll be settled to be my home. I'm not worried about a mansion, I'm just, man, just to be there. Settled. Settled. The old count was settled long ago. And so, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, the settlers, when they came in, they set in, they built a home. I'm not a settler here. I'm a pilgrim. Sojourn. To him, God, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. After he established me, made me perfect, strengthened me, so, and God will be the glory. Don't you worry about Satan. We know he'll be cast off in the lake of fire, which burneth forever. How's that? By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you. So this guy is helping whoever Peter's writing to. So you will meet Silvanus in heaven. Hope you know who he is. As I suppose, I have written briefly, extorting and testifying that this, First Peter, suffering. Is the true grace of God wherein you stand? <clears throat> now, this is something I always get confused and I can never get it straight. But here's the Christian life your stand is in Christ. You can never come out of that. Never. Your state is your wishy washy. 
I stand in Christ, but what, what is my state? I sin this moment, I get right the next moment. I sin again, and I get right. I'm lazy, I'm active. I'm on fire, I'm cold. Our stand is sure and, and steadfast. Our state, that's another, that's a problem. We're sinners. Verse 13. The church that is in Babylon. Now, there is a church out there called the Catholics that it is said of them that this is Rome. They will say Babylon is Rome. This is what is reported. So they can say that Peter is the Pope. But when you run over there to Revelation to Mystery Babylon, oh no, that's not them. So if you were to find a Catholic, ooh, 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 yeah, this is this is Rome and Peter. Run over to Revelation Mystery Babylon and look how quick they put their brakes on and skid down the road of the heavenly road. Oh no, that's not us. With scripture, with scripture, wait a minute, it's well, which is it? Now is Babylon so bad? The church that is at Babylon elect together with you. So there is a church, a group of people in Babylon that are serving God and doing right. With you, salute you. How you doing? Tell them I said hello, Peter. Okay, wrote it down. And so does Marcus, my son. A pope that has a son means he's got to be married. First of all, it looks to me like it's the salutation at the end of the letter, and he's saying it's by Sylvanus, and it's Sylvanus' son. That's just my reading of it. Could be. Sylvanus, I mean, Paul had other people write uh, for him. And it could be Marcus, his son. That's what they say who the writer is. I guess they make a note. Uh, they're saying the writer is Apostle Peter, so could be. Could be. So, hello, how you guys doing? So there are other churches that care about the welfare of other churches. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Paul would say a holy kiss. I don't know why this is not practiced in the churches. It's a Bible doctrine. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we conclude another book of the Bible. This book has been all about suffering. So when you get somebody who gives you a prosperity, think in your mind, 1 Peter. 1 Peter puts water on the fire of prosperity gospel. 